So I have no financial or proprietary interests in any of the products mentioned in the presentation. And bacterial keratitis can be caused due to various reasons. The risk factor could be ocular in the form of epithelial defect, eyelid disease, contract lens use, previous ocular surgery, ocular surface disease, compromised corneas, and topical antibiotics such as steroids and traditional eye medicine. These are two cases due to contact lens induced keratitis and keratitis in a dry eye. Uh, you can see that this is a case of bacterial keratitis after traditional eye medicine such as honey. A case of post-classic uh, keratitis, you can see the enomatous flap. And these two cases were inadvertently topical steroids were used, so there is thinning as well as perforation. The factors could also be systemic like Vanity highlighted. These are two cases in uh, diabetes and in rheumatoid arthritis where it tends to uh, be there in the form of a PUK. A uh, careful slit lamp examination is mandatory in a uh, case of uh, bacterial keratitis and this is just to uh, highlight the fact that the, the size of the infiltrate actually is different from the size of the epithelial defect. The size of the epithelial defect is in this case is much smaller than the size of the infiltrate and the bottom two slides show that when you change the position of the patient, the hypopion actually moves uh, in a case where the uh, hypopion is mobile. After grading them into mild, moderate and severe, uh, one has to look at the ulcer characteristics because there are certain organisms uh, which can, uh, uh, which, which have specific uh, features such as in staphylococcal ulcers which occur in compromised corneas uh, with localized distinct borders but the surrounding cornea is quite clear. Pneumococcal ulcers which are rapidly progressive with serpiginous ulcer, uh, hypopion and deep stromal abscess and pseudomonas ulcers which have ground glass appearance, greenish yellowish discharge, ring ulcer and they generally perforate in 2 to 5 days. Uh, my, mycobacteria uh, uh, ulcers are becoming more important now because of uh, refractive surgery. Uh, it has a cracked windshield appearance uh, with the surrounding cornea which is clear and uh, minimal AC reaction. And morexella generally occur in diabetics, alcoholics and malnourished uh, patients. Uh, the oval ulcers uh, which are inferior and uh, localized. Nucardia on the other hand has a cracked windshield appearance with satellite lesions and wreath-like pattern. Although clinically if you see uh, this was a study which was done uh, which compared whether clinically uh, can you predict what the microbiological diagnosis would be and uh, they were able to uh, predict it in almost 76% uh, of the cases but the antimicrobial use before referral significantly attenuates the clinical diagnosis and may hamper the microbial recovery. Uh, after having uh, scraped the ulcer, it is also important to understand that sometimes when you have a post-LK keratitis, you may have to lift the graft and then take the scrape. Or if it is a case of uh, post-LASIC uh, uh, keratitis, then you may have to actually lift the flap and take the scrape from the undersurface of the bed as well as from the, uh, uh, from the uh, surface of the uh, flap itself. Uh, and send it for microbiological investigation. Uh, th these were two cases which we had of uh, DSEC infection wherein we had to use intravitreal uh, uh, scissors uh, to actually take a small piece of the DSEC lenticule to send it for microbiology. And this is what I was talking about. If the ulcer is not amenable to scraping, you may take a short suture and just pass it through and then send it for culture sensitivity. Uh, you may have to do special stains for acid fast uh, for special organisms uh, like acid fast for Mycobacterium fortitum, Actinomyces and Nucardia. Uh, otherwise, two, one very important stain is KOH which rules out the uh, fungal infections and if you have the facility to, to do any one uh, stain then KOH should be done. And grams can uh, identify both bacteria as well as fungi. Now the culture positivity rate for bacteria is 40 to 73 percent and this is to highlight the fact that at times you may have to send the offending suture for culture sensitivity or even contact lens, contact lens solution and contact lens case in cases where it is due to contact lens uh, indu uh, induced bacterial keratitis. Now as soon as the patient comes to you, you have to see all the records and see whether the microbiology is available or not. If the microbiology is available, then you should know what the patient is already on because you want to know what the patient is already over with. And 
apart from that you should also check the compliance the resistance and the possibility of a mixed or polymicrobial infection however if the patient doesn't have microbiology reports you can stop the antibiotics for 12 to 24 hours rescrape and uh, when two negative smears are there then finally one has to do a corneal biopsy now there are two treatment strategies uh, which have been advocated uh, one is the combination therapy at rt center we start with 45 kefazolin 5% or plus tobramycin 1.3 percent which is also fortified i think in the centers in the south uh, fluoroquinolone moxie or getafloxacin is started with tobramycin 1.3 percent uh, and uh, this is because of the fact that a kefalosporin or fluoroquinolone will cover for gram positive cocci and aminoglycoside would cover for gram negative bacilli uh, monotherapy has also been uh, advocated uh, using fluoroquinolones, uh, oflox, ciprofloxx, getaflox, or moxiflox. Uh, to summarize, in cases of mild ulcers which are less than 3 millimeters in size, not involving the visual axis, one can start with the monotherapy. But if there are moderate to severe ulcers which are involving the visual axis, then one goes in for combination therapy. And of course, one has to always keep in mind what the patient has already taken or is already over with so that you don't start the same drugs again. Uh, one begins with a loading dose round the clock for the initial 48 hours and one has to assess the clinical response. This is how uh, kefazolin and tobramycin are made as fortified drops. And when specific organisms are present, then specific antibiotics have to be started. For instance, for methicillin resistant staph, vancomycin uh, has to be started. For severe pseudomonas keratitis, septazidine may be tried. For mycobacterium fortitum colonia micacin, and if the ulcer is severe, then clarithromycin have to be started. Uh, for nucardia, amicacin again or trimethoprim and if it is uh, a severe ulcer then trimethoprim or sulfamethoxazole systemically has to be started and this is how the fortified drops uh, are prepared. Uh, apart from this, the adjuvant therapy consists of cycloplegics, antiglucoma medications if required. Uh, tear supplements we generally do not give in a case of corneal ulcer because I think that dilutes the uh, concentration of the fortified drops that you're giving and also uh, there is any way excessive tearing which is there in these cases. Systemic antibiotics are started in cases of perforations or impending perforations when the ulcer is after a perforating injury, when there's a scleral involvement and when the organism is in the seria or hemophilus which can penetrate an intact uh, epithelium. Uh, uh, the role of topical corticosteroids is uh, controversial. It can be added to antibiotics when the organism is uh, identified and treated generally after 24 to 78 hours of antibiotics. We should not start topical corticosteroids in ulcers of unknown etiology, ulcers that were not cultured, ulcers which were not treated empirically with broad spectrum antibiotics. And I think there's no role of uh, systemic steroids in the case of bacterial keratitis. Uh, there was, uh, there are, uh, in fact, two studies uh, which have uh, uh, seen the role of steroids in bacterial keratitis. One was by Blair et al. The sample size was uh, 30 eyes, randomized control trial, and they did not find any benefit of adding steroids, but they did not find it to be harmful when employed in closely monitored clinical setting. And the other study, uh, very significant study, was uh, published by Dr. Srinivasan's group from Arvindaya Hospital. Uh, steroids for ulcer, uh, corneal ulcer trial, which has uh, practically answered the question whether to start or not to start. Uh, uh, significant effect of uh, steroids was seen in ulcers with baseline visual acuity of less than counting fingers and in central location. But otherwise, there was no significant difference in the visual acuity, infiltrate scar size, re or perforation when uh, the steroids were compared to placebo in, a case, in cases of uh, bacterial keratitis. Uh, the sample size was large in this, five, 500 uh, eyes. So this, uh, uh, pa this uh, does answer the question whether uh, steroids have to be started or not. A favorable signs would be decrease in infiltration, area and density, epithelial healing and decrease AC reaction and unfavorable signs would be uh, other bacteria such as uh, if the infection occurs because of atypical bacteria, herpes, fungus and protozoa and then one should also keep in mind the other factors such as dry eye, vitamin A deficiency and exposure and modify the antibiotics if no clinical improvement is there and taper when clinical signs of improvement are there. 
word about the fourth generation fluoroquinolones. Uh, they are helpful by the mechanism that they are acting both on tropoisomerase 4 as well as uh, DNA gyrase and uh, so cause lethal breaks in the DNA. They are effective against gram positive and gram negative bacteria such as Staph enterobacteria, C, H influenza, cipro resistant Staph aureus, and mycobacteria. And if you see the various clinical trials which have compared monotherapy with combination therapy, the results are equal, equivalent, except in the last trial which was done by Hugh Taylor's group and they found that there were more perforations with ofloxacin. But this was a retrospective, uh, this took historical control, so the findings have to be taken with a pinch of salt. Important thing to note is that in all these trials, the ulcers were mild or moderate and not severe. Uh, resistance, it is said, does not de uh, is rare to occur in this because there are three mechanisms by, by which it has to develop. One is the efflux mechanism, which drives the uh, antibiotic out of the uh, organism. Second is decreased cell per permeability, and third is a genetic mutation, which should actually uh, occur at both the enzymatic levels. However, having said that, we have reported and also others have reported fluoroquinolone resistance because of inadvertent use of fluoroquinolones, uh, which is available uh, off the counter, and also because of use of fluoroquinolones in systemic infections. This was a pilot study which was uh, published, which compared combination therapy with gatiflox and moxiflox in mild to moderate bacterial keratitis, and time to epithelization was found to be similar. The only randomized control trial which is available uh, between the fluoroquinolones, that is uh, moxiflox versus oflox and combination therapies, again by Dr. Hugh Taylor's group, and they did not find any difference in the healing rate, cure rate, or complications. Uh, we uh, are yet to publish our results where we had recruited 220 patients in moderate bacterial keratitis and uh, we again also did not find any difference between the uh, uh, fluoroquinolone or the combination therapy. Uh, the, uh, the healing rate was 92% in the fortified group and moxifloc and 94% with the moxiflox group. Uh, there could be sequel or complications to a case of bacterial ker keratitis such as perforations, uh, uh, such as anterior staphyloma, uh, which uh, need to be uh, prevented. And uh, surgical management may need to be resorted to when there's impending perforation, perforation uh, or in cases of uh, microbial keratitis where maximal therapy does not uh, work. Uh, this is just to show, and this would be covered later by Dr. Titiyal. And uh, thank you for your attention.